right. So I, I was telling others this briefly. So let, let's kick this off. So obviously last community call of the year, um, you know, my, my thinking for this is, you know, a really high level, maybe uh, uh, year in review for Agoric, because I think a lot happened. You know, we have folks who joined recently, people who are listening and, you know, who might have joined mid year, who missed a lot of what we what we did earlier this year. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of thinking we could like, you know, just shoot through some things that, you know, milestones, accomplishments of Agoric. And um, <laughs> I will probably miss things. So do not hate me if I miss anything. Just speak up. <laughs> Jesse, Roland, you guys tackled a lot this year as well. Um, so, you know, if we do miss something, let's, let's, uh, uh, you know, let me know. And then I think we can just go right into some, some of the more recent updates, you know, where we're looking, what's the future. Um, yeah, we have a lot to hit on, so we have to move fast. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I think maybe the best way of handling is I can kind of run through some of these and, you know, if anyone wants to add some, some color, let's, let's do it. So obviously we had our, our, you know, last year, technically we had our public sale, um, you know, we, that brought in about 48,000 new token holders it was, um, you know, we had about 50 million build, uh, purchased, um, you know, I'm thinking in that world too, relevant, you know, we, we, we brought on four custody providers that super useful shout out to, to Vanessa for a lot of work there. I don't, I don't see her on this call yet, but if she is, she can jump up. Um, you know, I'm thinking around, uh, uh you know, some of the big kind of engineering milestones and product milestones, you know, Agoric obviously connected to IBC, huge shout out to validators, <laughs> you know, Jesse, I know you worked a lot on that. So if there's anything you want to include there quickly, please do. Oh my goodness. <laughs> we basically had a, a bug hunt this summer so that we could get to IBC. And I feel like our validators are like all very close friends. I'm excited to see because <laughs> we were restarting the network. We were hollering because the network wouldn't restart. It was pretty wild. But, you know, not only did we get the network into a healthy state, the validators just went and helped the community figure out what needed to be connected and how. And that was really cool because it just meant that, you know, we were finally live and we were part of the IBC gang, which is kind mm -hmm. of a big deal in this Cosmos thing, I hear. Yep. 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 <laughs> That's great. Yeah. And, and I think that that kind of laid the, the road, you know, for those unfamiliar, you know, Goric, um, you know, we have a, a, a very high level roadmap of mainnet phases. And that really opened the door for for mainnet one, which, you know, Dean, maybe you want to touch on this briefly, but you yep. know, really, you know, did a lot for our contract platform. <laughs> well, main, so mainnet one was, you know, we, we had the Cosmos layer out, which the, the you know, the, 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 the fires in, in June, July were, were resolving issues um, uh, on down through the, the Cosmos layer, along with other, you know, other folks across the, the Cosmos community. But in October, we launched our JavaScript uh, VM um, with the initial use case, which is of course, IST, inner, inner, inner protocol. Um, and uh, so, you know, having running JavaScript, running deterministically with failover and restarts and all these kinds of things that we've, you know, that we've brought to, to harden JavaScript for, and, and the framework that we built in JavaScript, proving it out, getting it, getting some contracts into production and, and battle testing for, you know, rolling out the framework more generally uh, for people next year. That's just a huge, huge step forward of getting that, that, that real, you know, looking at Zoe offer safety for those of you familiar with it, or the, 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 the durability and contract upgrade stuff or, or those kinds of things, you know, seeing those in production was, is, is just awesome. So that, that, that went out in October, uh, in October with the you know launch of JavaScript contracts uh, on chain and the launch of uh, IST um, and again, back to that community, the community, you know, pulled together, did the validation testing, rollout, um, uh, community members uh, made the bridges out to, you know, Osmosis and, and, and Axelar and Crescent and et cetera, uh, Gravity and so forth, and, you know, set up the, the pools um, for IST to make IST available on several of those, uh, the, those partner chains. Um, so, so that's all been steadily happening since the PSM launch in October. So that's some of the, 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 on the IST side on the more general programming platform framework. Of course, as I said, we've gotten the battle testing, but we've also been working with uh, mainnet with partners for 
um, uh, you know, developing their own applications to run on the JavaScript uh, platform and framework. So create from Crya, um, LH2 staking, uh, Crabble, AgreeWeek, Lipso. These are five of the folks that you can see on our blog post that have interesting diversity of, uh, of applications from liquid staking to, you know, NFT rental and hierarchical NFTs and portfolio management and that sort of thing. So some very, very cool stuff. Um, continuing that community thing, also, of course, the you know, people that, that, that purchase tokens, token purchasers with the network up, with rewards turned on, people were staking. We had a push in April uh, to get people, you know, to get the chain up to what appears like 30%, it's now up to 40%, but a big chunk of tokens are still in reserves for um, uh, decentralization and community. So that number actually looks more like 60% of the tokens that could be staked, which is, you know, the target that I was really looking forward to reaching this year. Um, and so, so I'm really happy that we've got, you know, a big chunk of the network staked even before we've rolled out our, 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 our general availability of the programming layer. So, you know, so, so, so that's going to be a lot of our, uh, I don't know, should I talk about shifting focus for next year or save that for the end? <laughs> Good question. Um, so, so a lot of what we'll be doing, you know, so this year we got IST out. It's now in the phase of, of, uh, you know, and, and, and people launch it. It's now a separate community. It's in the phase of integrating with other chains. Um, so that they can have a stable token that works, you know, uh, cross uh, cross the interchain and provides, as I say, grease for the gears of commerce in, in interchain commerce, which is, you know, Cosmos is leading the way on. Um, but the platform is, of course, the core thing that 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 is, you know, sort of the heart of the Agoric technology is the the hardened JavaScript and the framework that enables rapid composition of components. So we built IST as components. We built it as reusable uh, uh, modules, and we built it to be extensible, which is the the key advantage that IST will have over other stable tokens. Is it's straightforward to add new solvent, robust modules to 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 enhance how you can mint IST. And we are certainly in the process of building more of those modules or finishing up more of those modules so that the IST community can roll those out. But, um, but the goal for next year is, of course, make the platform generally available for people to be uh, building smart contracts on. So I mentioned the mainnet two partners, but other things we did this year, there was even in February, we did the, the we, we, we worked with the Blue Lava Conference, which was really teaching Web2 developers about blockchain. So it was a purely focused on brand new Web2 developers to see which things got them interested, which things excited them, which what kinds of use cases they wanted to pursue, um, what kind of problem they needed to solve. You know, we carried some of this through, you know, we were other events, Gateway um, in Prague, um, the Cosmos, Cosmoverse in Medellin, um, Consensus in Masari Mainnet. Um, so, so we've been at a bunch of events initially focused on IST, but some of them, like, like Blue Lava, were starting to lay the groundwork for the growth of, of the platform out to um, general uh, uh, mainstream JavaScript developers. And then the last thing, you know, backing up to sort of building the community, building the framework, um, in addition to all the community building um, that Jesse spearheaded in, 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 in June and the validators all jumped on board and really sort of pulled, help, helped us all pull that um, ecosystem and community together. Um, uh, DCF launched um, and, uh, and, and Rick can talk about what DCF did this year. <laughs> is, wait, is Rick here? Yes, we have DCF in the house. <laughs> Rick, Rick, Rick. We say his name three times. He shows. Oh, up. I've got DCF in here in review near the end. But go ahead, Rick, if you want to jump in now. Oh uh, yeah, thanks. No worries, guys. Uh, I lost you there for a minute too, as well, Dean. So I don't know exactly what you covered. I know you were talking about the fact that we did get DCF off the ground this this year, which that's really, all I said. I I came on board with you guys in February. Wow, it's I can't believe it's it's been that long already. During that period of time, really, DCF's focus has just been trying to get all the nuts and bolts operational side of things together. But we've also been able to take a couple of steps that are more substantive, particularly going through that first round of delegation that we engaged in, where we moved 45 million tokens uh, that uh, were sitting in the DCF treasury um, into delegation with the Agoric validators. And, and that's something that we're looking to reassess and evaluate going forward into 2023. Um, you know, taking a look and see if people have met their commitments, uh, seeing how the security profiles are looking these days, 
uh, and seeing what's new out there that, that deserves support as well. So that's something we will be reassessing coming into Q1. Um, we're also looking in Q1 at, at things like getting bounties set up, uh, having a proper bounty program that is strategically aligned with uh, supporting the ecosystem is a very important part of what we plan to do. And 2023, we'll see the launch of that. Um, similarly, in this last year, we, we took some very first baby steps in that direction, doing some support for things like uh, uh, events at, at Consensus and Masari and, and also uh, supporting what was happening uh, in Gateway in Prague. Sorry, I was drawing a blank on the name there for a second. So expect to see more of that from us going forward in 2023. Um, I suppose also probably one of the big accomplishments for us is that we got really a rock star board of directors in place right now. We've got four of our five seats filled. We're looking to fill that fifth seat as we speak. Uh, going through interviews for that. So that's an ongoing process, but I'm really happy with where we've landed up to this point. And it's, it's really been a pleasure working with, with all of you guys. So I don't want to monopolize the discussion here today, so I'll, I'll stop there. But in short, uh, it's been a phenomenal year. It's been a lot of fun working with you guys, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what 2023 brings for us. That's great. Thank you, Rick. Thank you, and DCF, of course. I, I'm um, also really glad that you guys stepped up to help with governance and are driving the, the you know the governance side. So Gork gets to focus on building software. So yeah, that's slowly, really awesome. slowly that that is coming together. I mean, the economic committee has has I think been really huge for us on the IST or protocol side of things, um, and I think we're going to be doing some more interesting things with governance going forward. But right now, it's all been about getting the mechanism in place, getting the processes documented, and con uh, communicating that to the community. So slowly, slowly, but yeah, we're getting there. To add one little thing, um, I was looking at a, a tracker that we have on community items and community participation. Since August, our community alone is engaged in about 35 separate activities, discussions, governance, participation, hooking up IBC channels that have really made the network come to life. It's been a fantastic year for participation in our ecosystem. And I think next year is going to be even better. Agreed. So let's talk about what we're building. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm happy to jump in there. And I, and I know Dean, you'll help as well. Um, so, you know, that was a great overview of the last year. And it, as we were going through it, I was thinking, wow, there, there's like 50 other things that we, we couldn't mention here, but it just so much happened. Um, to talk a little bit about uh, what we're actually doing now and sort of, and what's upcoming, uh, I want to start by saying a, a few folks in the community have asked about the, the current roadmap, and I really appreciate the engagement there. We um, are, are targeting sort of getting back into the rhythm of updating the roadmap uh, so that there's sort of always this view online of, of what's coming over the next several months. Um, we were doing that through most of the year and then with the Pismo release uh, and with uh, Ivan coming on for engineering, we, we sort of dropped off. But um, to give the overview here, uh, we've got work going in a, in a bunch of different categories. So you can sort of think of it as uh, Agoric is targeting the next major release of the platform after Pismo, which includes a few important elements. Um, one is upgrades to the platform itself. So um, those will include uh, bringing the developer experience with Ag Solo and Smart Wallet back together. Uh, so getting everything in line with Pismo release, which will help our, our mainnet two partners, will help third party developers that are um, working on the platform, making sure that they're able to work with the latest software. Um, so that actually will likely go out prior to the next release uh, because it's not a, a mainnet upgrade. Um, but then the upgrade itself includes uh, changes to inter-protocol. So we have the vaults release coming up as the next major item. And so that has been undergoing major planning effort. Um, a lot of the vaults contracts are already implemented, but there are some changes that um, we're, we're looking to make as part of this upcoming release. Um, and uh, making sure that uh, you know, that say, is by ready. The way, let me in inject. I mean, those are changes that we're looking to make because people outside of Agoric asked for them, suggested them, and that sort of thing. You know, we've already gotten good, great, you know, great feedback um, from outside as we've reviewed with people the, the, the overall system architectures. 
Yes, that, that's exactly right. And so in, in particular, for example, uh, the liquidation mechanism for vaults has come uh, as a design through discussions with a whole bunch of different stakeholders. Um, and we'll, we'll look to get that posted on the community forum as well, uh, likely this week or early next. Um, and, and so that has been a, a major effort from a, a design and planning standpoint on our end. Uh, and then the the piece that goes along with that is also oracles, which you know Interprotocol will be the first major consumer of price feeds via oracles, but um, it's also critically important for any other DeFi protocol that's launching on Agoric. And so uh, that first end to end use case we're we're putting together in conjunction with uh, Simply Staking and the decentralized Oracle network uh, that we've been speaking with. And uh, there's sort of software both on the Agoric side and on the Simply Staking side there and a whole bunch of testing and planning to, to make sure that that's up and running effectively. Um, we also are working on uh, IBC Loopback, which is a really <laughs> cool set of functionality. And I, I, knew, I knew Dean would jump in. So Dean, uh, why, don't you, why, don't, why don't you explain IBC Loopback? Well, so IBC Loopback is one of the, the pieces of IBC that was specified, but was never quite implemented. And it's sort of a core basic functionality of TCP that I can open a TCP connection to another machine. I can also open it to my local machine. And so that's got, you know, sort of basic network engineering functionality, like if I want to do testing of IBC on the same machine that I'm running the IBC thing, I need to be able to invoke IBC connections, but have them connect to processes on the local chain. The place where that shows up for um, for uh, smart contracts, this is, you know, both Agoric and it'll matter for Cosmwasm as well, is you know, we've already had bounties where we had a, a smart contract written in JavaScript that could reach over ICA, interchain accounts, to control a, 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 a seat on, for example, in a cost chain to start up jobs or, or, or manage jobs or detect when they fail. You know, that kind of job, if I was going to do anything useful on the Cosmos side, I would like to be able to apply that contract to point at our own chain. So we've we've already got one group, um, RH Staking, that that they're doing liquid staking where they want to be able to manage staking locally. They've got contracts that can issue these requests um, over IBC. So you could run a smart contract on Agoric to control staking on another chain, but because loopback is not yet implemented, you can't use the very same mechanism to control staking on the Agoric chain. And so that's sort of a basic functionality in IBC that will benefit, you know, the entire community, but is critical to to um, one or a couple of well, critical to this 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 liquid staking use case, and it's also critical to improve systemic testing of IBC by being able to do local CI with a with multiple parties all engaging in IBC communications with each other. So I'm really excited about that. I'm working with Strange Love on that. Um, you know, and, 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 and the folks like Aditya that, that, that are reviewers and provide architecture and, and the whole IBC thing is, you know, knows what's coming and, is, and has been, been, been um, uh, adding in their, their, their feedback and comments. So, so I think that'll be a really useful uh, sort of community good, as it were. Yeah, that's right. Really excited for IBC Loopback. Uh, and then we're also working on rapid secure network rejoin for validators, yes. which... which yeah, uh, Jesse is named State Sync Plus. Uh, and Dean, do you want to go through <laughs> Actually, that? Actually, Ivan did. So, so okay. um, uh, State Sync is, of course, the Cosmos level to be able to, you know, rapidly, you know, validate is sort of key to the ecosystem, key to the system working. And so this was, you know, to be able to rapidly create a new validator or restart a validator or start one over or what have you, um, State Sync is useful at the Cosmos level for being able to do that. Now, we have layers of software above. Uh, uh, the Cosmos level that also need to participate in that kind of thing and and satisfy the general requirement, the general goal of rapidly starting a new node. And so this is, you know, state sync plus all the additional wrinkles that we need to be able to get a, you know, asynchronous messaging communication with the client all restored and, you know, VMs all restored to the same state points and that sort of thing. And so that's something that, that, that you know, the validator community has raised as a, as a, as a, uh, as a missing feature, and um, and we very much want to get you know get it back in and available um, uh, to, to 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 simplify the or, or improve the, the the validator support. So that's that's in the process of investigation, and you know and some development has already started, and that's one of the things that we expect to roll out um, uh, uh, you know as soon as possible in our in our next release. And so we'll we'll make sure to have a, a clear summary of of 
what's being worked on right now and it, as well to have things posted on the community forums in, in the next week or two um, and, and to make sure that that's sort of up to date as we move forward. Uh, the, the one other thing that we were doing a bunch of work on is making sure that upgrade of the, the chain uh, after it's already live uh, and has a bunch of JavaScript state uh, is, is ready to go. So uh, this will be, this next release will be the first upgrade where, you know, post Pismo, which is really exciting. Um, so I think with that, I'll, I'll turn it over to other folks, but uh, a whole lot going on on the engineering and product side. And the security side, Jesse. <laughs> yeah, well, one thing I would like to just point out is we have lots of things that are coming through the pipeline. And what that's going to mean for us on the security front and the reliability front is our dev nets and our test nets are going to be an incredible playground in the coming year. So I'm really going to be looking to our community and folks who want to come in and play with some of these toys we've been building uh, to come and help us challenge them and assess them and dig in and make sure they do what we think they do. Uh, let's see. Besides all the fun stuff that's coming up next year, um, as usual, I have an update on security audits. Woohoo! Uh, we just closed an assessment last week. We haven't gotten the report yet, but I'm going to tell you some stuff anyway. Um, this particular assessment, yeah. we had them take a look at. Um, <clears throat> we had them take a look at Cosmic Swing Set. We had them poke at the smart wallet a little bit more, and we also had them look at the giant overall whole PSM implementation. Them, in this case, is Atreides Partners, uh, probably one of the best firms I've had the pleasure to work with in my career. They dug up three low severity issues. A couple of them we feel a little embarrassed about, but they don't really represent any kind of major worrisome risk in the stack. So we will be publishing the report as soon as we uh, have a chance to get it and comb through it. But that's going to show up on agoric.com slash security. I hope that we're able to uh, calm down for a minute and get a blog out about all this crazy security audit work we've been doing uh, for the past year and a half. But that's also something that is on my stretch goal for New Year's. So keep an eye, um, on it, again, on our security page for that. How many security audits? I quit counting. Uh, <laughs> but it it's a big many. system. There are lots of pieces, yeah. <laughs> okay, so, so here's, here's something Dean won't like me saying, but I'm going to say it anyway. Our new trick is that we try to run security audits without Dean knowing. That's how regular <laughs> thing they are. And it's kind of amazing because there's at least one he didn't realize was happening, right. which means on the security front, our security engineering shenanigans have been amazing. <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> like, here's a report for an audit you didn't think was happening. Okay. Yep. Yep. So besides that, um, most of you know that we, you know, work on security things quite a bit. We've actually grown our security engineering team uh, significantly. And a thing that's been on our list is to get started with threat models. Threat models are um, essentially a kind of security process documentation where you enumerate all the risks that live in code. And we have enough security engineering muscle that we can really dig into this work deeply um, and work on the written documentation and go through the whole fancy framework we're going to kick that off in tandem with the development of Vault and Oracle early next, the Oracle network uh, for Inter early next year. Not sure when we're going to be able to publish them because it's a really significant bit of work, but it's super exciting. Uh, I don't know of another team that's actively threat modeling like it is, you know, the World Cup final in their blockchain protocol. So that's pretty exciting. And we have also got some ongoing work. I've mentioned uh, our partnership with Modable and all of the work that we've put into fuzzing with XS for some time. Uh, over the past few weeks, we've actually gotten to a really interesting place where we noticed that there was a slowdown in finding bugs. And so we decided to get hacking a little bit more. We played with OSS fuzz, we tweaked Fazili, um, excess is written in C, so, you know, bugs just happen there, and that's okay. We don't freak out about them. But um, we have a new uh, hire who joined us in October, Raphael, and he has done an incredible work with Peter from Modable to just make these wild bugs fall out of the code. Um, over the past year, you know, we've 
put all kinds of buzzers and harnesses and things together. But this past month has been particularly exciting. And I just really think that even though fuzzing is fuzzing and maybe automated security testing is boring, we really have to celebrate this because we've had a great year and a half with this work. And it's going to set us up for an incredible mainnet three when it's time for that thing to show up. Um, besides that, on the community or on the main net operation front, we do have some updates. Uh, a couple weeks ago, there was a little validator restart issue on main net, and I uh, might have made a little bit of a noise about that one because we don't like it when the nodes can't turn off and turn on again. We think we know what the root cause is, but our engineering team is getting to work on that one. Really small impact. It's only, uh, I think, we got two nodes. So we're still working on it, but we will probably have some updates on that the next time we're ready to cut a software release. And then on Monday, we had another little mainnet hiccup where the network sort of got congested and took a half an hour to, to clear itself up. We also got to work on that. In less than an hour, we were able to respond and throw up a Discord thread and get our, our GitHub issue where we're collecting information and troubleshooting going. Uh, but validators definitely keep an eye out on those things. Um, we are working to make sure that we figure out the root cause and we patch it up and ship it out as soon as we have answers. Besides that, um, last bit of news is it is time for us to schedule validator office hours for December. So if you're a validator or you're thinking about being a validator or you hang out in DevNet and TestNet, keep an eye on Discord. We will uh, put some time aside so that we can do a couple things, talk about what's on the roadmap for next year, but also share some updated security runbooks so that when things happen, um, you all know how we're going to reach out to you. You know how to tell us something's wrong. Hey, Discord still works really great, though. <laughs> um, and we will just spend a little time maybe reflecting on some of the adventures we had this year. And that's me. Cool. Thank you, Jesse. All right. I think that sums most of it up. Um, Dean, any other uh, closing thoughts for this community call? Yeah. I, so first off, thanks so much for the community for making this happen. Um, you know, it, it has been an education getting into the, the, the world of Cosmos and then actually launching and seeing just, you know, I mean, you sort of you know the community is important, but then when they start when they when they start actually carrying the ball and solving problems and reacting quickly and you know and 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 really you know taking ownership of 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 getting solutions out there, it's just it, it it's you know there's just nothing like that feeling, and it's also such a relief to have to, to have that uptake. So I am looking forward to to providing the community ever more things to be able to do stuff with. Um, the big thing, as I said, is we are, it, you know, it, it's worth, worth, worth uh, 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 repeating, we, you know, we have launched IST, um, the, the econ committee is out there and is, you know, and is doing things beyond, uh, you know, what we started with, you know, die just went live. Um, thank you, community for doing that. Um, and, uh, and we are we are continuing to build the software for that, for what the ISD community uh, will need and want, leveraging the power of Agoric. And we, in, in 2023, will will be continuing to do that and have the have the the you know really start focusing on building up the development environment, development tooling, developer documentation, etc. Um, for people to build their own applications and businesses on top of uh, on top of the Agoric platform. So you know that's been our long time mission, and I'm really excited to 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 be um, you know to 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 have laid the groundwork for that. Where as I said. IST is a big part of the groundwork. Our long-term mission is an economy in which you can launch things. And we think that, you know, stable token is a critical part of that. Um, and so, uh, and, and it's gone from an economy in which you can launch that, launch that into, we care a lot about an interchain economy into which we can launch things. And so that's going to be, you know, the, that's, that, that's, that's going to be what's driving us all next year. So I'm really excited about that. And I look forward to, uh, uh, working with everyone and hearing everything that they need and, and, and building awesome software to solve those problems. So <laughs> thank you all. <laughs> thank you, Dean. Yeah. Let me know. There's a, there's also a, um, inter protocol community call next week, uh, Thursday at nine 30 Pacific, um, four 30, uh, UTC. So 
yeah, I think there gonna be some fun updates from that team. Um, mm -hmm. Yep, yep. All right. Well, thank you, Roland, Jesse, Dean, Rick, everyone who's listening. It's been good. And um, yeah, we'll see you on the next community call in January. Thanks, Dante. All right. Thanks, Bye, everybody. everybody. Thanks, Dante. Bye-bye, everybody.